I don't know about you, but it's been a crazy day already. Amen? It started early this morning for me. I don't know about you guys. But it's so exciting to be here. I got it. When I was coming down from Pine Bluff all ago, I got a text from Jeannie. He said that um, the other sister left. And so Miss Eileen just got a little nervous. And what she's dealing with flared up a little bit, so they won't be here. We got several people that are out and about, so you pray for them. You know, I'm uh, just so glad that you that you took over. You know, John picked out all this music and put it all together, <laughs> and he's not here. So we had we had to fumble through what he had. Amen. It's just that kind of day. Wow. Oh, it's got to. Amen. I do have a thank you from the uh, Stevens family. I just like to read to you, if you don't mind. It says, "Thank you for the food, the dinner, thoughts, and prayers. Your kindness." will not be forgotten. Mother was truly blessed to have such a wonderful church family. Continue to remember our family in your prayers. May God bless you all, Juanita Stevens' family. Amen? She will be missed. There's no doubt about it. How many uh, veterans do we have here with us today? Any? I know Mike. Is he back in the back? How many veterans? Uh, veterans stand up. How many veterans do we have? We got, it's, in the, it's in the house now. We've got two. Is there others that are not here today that we know that, that have served our country? They're, Walter Richards? Chris? Any others? Your husband? Okay, he did too? Wow. Well, let's give them say thank you. As I was thinking about this Veterans Day and all the things that were going on, Lord laid this message on my heart if you want to take your Bibles, if you know where Jonah, we've been studying Jonah at night, just go one book back, and that is Obadiah. You'll miss it because it is the shortest book in the Old Testament. Obadiah is very short. There is no mentioning of it in the New Testament. And here's a little uh, book that uh, just only has 21 uh, verses. It would be a very, very small letter if he was to set down and pin it to someone. But what is significant about Obadiah, Veterans Day, America, and what's taking place in our world today? Let me ask you a couple of questions to plant a seed. Does your antennas or your alert system go on, up or flash or whatever it is that you say for you when it deals with issues of Islam? Does it sort of make you just think a little bit what's happening around the world? And we see all the things are taking place. You see that uh, this morning as I was, it was early this morning, I can't tell you what time, 3 or 4 o'clock, uh, had the news on as I was getting ready to head out. It said that uh, Israel and Palestine are shooting uh, rockets back and forth right now. And Israel said, you know, if you keep playing, we're going to put the herd on you. You know, we've had enough. You know, stop. If you stop, we'll stop. And so we know that Iran, he's already said that he is, his goal in life is to destroy. He was called to wipe out Israel. You know, Israel in America is called Big Satan and Little Satan. All this has taken place in our world today as we turn on the news. You can leave the Bible out of it if you like. That's fine. But what I want to share with you today are this little bitty small 21 verses is one letter, the smallest book in the Old Testament. There is no mentioning of it in the New Testament. And it is, it is just packed with issues of our day. Now let me go on and say, I got in there 841 B.C. Now that's, you know, that's a round figure. A lot of guys and uh, theo theologians, they give you different dates. But let's just go with that figure. So that was you know, almost 900 years before Christ. And it's been 2,000 years since Christ, so you're looking at 2,841 years ago that this thing was pinned to paper. And when they started canonizing the Bible, they put it in there and said, we've got a book here that we need to put in the Bible so that it will help us today. It is a fascinating little read, but you've got to have a little bit of insight and a little bit of understanding about it. If you open it up your Bible to verse 1, it says, The vision of Obadiah... Thus says the Lord of God concerning Edom. Now let's just stop right there because I want you to understand what is taking place. Edom is from the Edomites. 
The Edomites are from Esau. Esau had a brother. What was his name? Jacob. What was their mom and dad's name? Isaac and Rebekah. Okay, so you've got to go all the way back to there. Now what's really fascinating about all of this is you've got to go all the way back to Ishmael. Ishmael was the, the son of Abraham and Hagar. And Abraham was Abram and Sarah, or Sarai at that time. Abram and Sarai, you know, uh, God told them they would have a child. His name would be Isaac, but they had to wait on him, right? But, you know, they got all caught up with not being able to because of their age and different things. And Abram, Abram and, I won't say Abraham and Sarah, but it's Abram and Sarah at that time, you know, they got caught up in all the things that was around them in the world. And there was all kinds of paganism brought into the system to where, you know, if you couldn't have a wife or have a child, you could go out and get a handmaiden from your wife, um, from, your, uh, from your original wife. That's what Hagar was. Hagar worked for Sarai. And so he, she said, you go ahead and take uh, Abram, you go ahead and take this woman as your wife, have a child with her, and that'll be my child. Well, you all know what happened. It became an issue. As soon as the child was born, there was conflict between the two women. Go figure, all right? You know, what, what woman wants to share a man? Amen, okay? So all this is going on and all these things are happening. She had a child and his name was Ishmael. I'm just going to show you how all this works today. Just bear with me, all right? So Ishmael and Hagar, there was a fight between Sarai and uh, Hagar. And so they got into a big fight. She goes to Abram and says, Abram, what do you, what do you want me to do? She, he, she says, hey, my hands are clean of this. You just do whatever you want to. So she, uh, Sarai sent Hagar and Ishmael packing. Said, you all go. And so they went out into the woods to die because they had nobody to take care of them. She was Egyptian. You know, all these issues that she had to deal with. So she had a baby. There's all kinds of problems and things she had to deal with. And the angel of the Lord appeared to her and said, uh-uh, no, that's not the way it is. God... The father made a promise that whatever seed of Abraham, or Abram, Abraham, whatever, whatever seed would be blessed and multiplied. Well, out of that is, we, is Ishmael, is the whole complete, you know, Muslim community, the Arabs. Well, it wasn't Muslim at that time, it was the Arabs. Out of that, you know, Esau, which right here is Edom, who we're reading about, Edom, uh, Esau, his name's, he's got both names. I'll, I'll tell you how he got the name. It means red. Y'all remember when he went out and he came back in and he got hungry and he wanted to sell, uh, he said, I'll sell my birthright for the stew. Y'all remember that story? Well, the stew was red. And so red goes with Edom. That's how he got his name, Edom, the Edomites. Esau means hairy and red. Okay, are you with me? I'm trying, not trying to lose you because you need to tie this together to understand what was written 20, you know, 900 years ago that applies to us this very day. Later on, Esau, after they all split up and everybody left because Jacob, he ran and hid. Y'all remember that? And he saw they had all these problems. Well, Esau ended up marrying, you know, one of... Uh, Ishmael's daughters are in that line. Are you with me? Is that pretty wild? Well, you think about this now. Think about what's going on today. The, the Muslims have taken over the Arab nation. They are tied to Edom. They're tied to Esau. Esau is tied to Ishmael, and it's very applicable for us today. Amen? Are you with me? Because if you don't know that, then it's just a small 21-verse book and you have no idea what's taking place. But inside of this is wisdom. And as I go down through it, I just want you to see what God wants us to understand and not to be worried and not to be afraid because there's things that are going to happen in this earth in this time frame that you and I need to be prepared about. If you think there's been wars, you hold on because you haven't seen the war of wars that's getting ready to take place. Israel is getting ready to do something. If... Here, here, listen, guys, the Bible says, and can you, put, can you pull up Genesis chapter um, 16, verse 24? I'm guessing. If not, I'll use my Bible and find it. 
I want to say it's, it's, it's uh, Genesis 16, 24, I may be, or 12. It may be 12. Give me just a second. Because, guys, listen, I, I want you to get this. Uh, okay, that's it. That's it. Thank you. It is 16, 12. It says here, he's talking about Ishmael says, He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand will be against him, and he will live to the east of his brothers. Now, if you get in the back of your, in the back of your uh, maps, and you study back in that time, Edom was east of Jerusalem. Huh. Isn't that wild? All of this ties together without any hesitation, without any reservation. I'm, this, guys, I'm here to tell you, this little bitty book is filled with, you know, prophecy for us today. And you and I are seeing, you know, what's taking place in the Islamic community, what's taking place with the Muslims. The, the president of Iran, which I've already said, his goal is to bring an issue in the Messiah from their standpoint, not the Messiah that we worship. Now, they say Allah is their God, and we say Jehovah, but his real name is Yahweh, is his real name, and then we put those uh, translated into English, and we get the name Jehovah. His real name is Yahweh. He is the covenant cutter. He is the one true God who spoke everything into existence. Allah is one of the 365 gods that the Muslim people worshipped back when this gentleman, who Muhammad, who came up with this faith. And he picked Allah because Allah is the moon god. Are you with me? Don't let this go over your head. Because, guys, I'm telling you, you are living in the best time of history. You are living in a time when the Lord may come back and we may not have any more deaths. We may be living in the generation that experiences the rapture and goes and see all the things that take place in this world. Right now, Israel has got to be concerned about those who are north of them. And if you put your finger on the globe and you go straight up, guess what you run into? Moscow. In Ezekiel it says there's going to be an attack from the north. The Muslim nations are all around Israel and they are going to be led by the Russians, by those from the north, and they're going to attack and Israel's not going to be able to do anything and, Israel, and God himself is going to shut them down. That is not the battle of Armageddon. That is about to take place any day now. Now, what's going on over there right now? We're just leading up to it. We're getting closer and closer and closer. But I want you to know you don't have to fear. Yes, we need to be concerned. But what I've come to realize as I sit here and study and, and study prophecy and look at this, you know, from this little book right here, you and I have got the promise of God that he has got everything under control, everything is in charge, you know, he's got everything, it doesn't matter how bad it looks for us, when our economy falls, America becomes a, a third world country, if you will, we come underneath the United Nations, we become a, a one world government, or one world military power, it's okay, God is on his throne, he is in charge, amen? And you and I got to hold on to it. What you see happening in the world today is found in this little bitty book, Obadiah. Now, you understand how important it is? So let's look here at uh, chapter 1, verse 1. So you know that you understand there about, uh, about Edom. All right, it says, The vision of Obadiah, thus says the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a report from the Lord and a message has been sent among the nations, saying, Arise, and let us go against her for battle. Behold, I will make you small among the nations. Now he's talking about Edom here, okay? He says, You are greatly despised. The arrogance of your heart has deceived you. You live in the cliffs of the rock, in the loftiness of your dwelling place, who say in your heart, Who will bring me down to the earth? Though you build... High like an eagle, though you set your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. Now you know what he's saying here. Guys, this is not taking place. There have been battles and battles and battles, but guess what? It has never been destroyed. Edom, the Ninevites, Nebuchadnezzar, the Romans, the Greeks, there's been battles all through the Bible. But this is talking about a Bible of the future. You know, because I'm going to show you something here. If thieves came to you 
uh, if robbers by night, and how will you be ruined? Would you not? Would they not steal only until they had enough? If grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some gleanings? Oh, how Esau will be ransacked, and his hidden treasure searched out. And all men allied with you will send you forth uh, to the border. And the men at peace with you will deceive you and overpower you. They who eat your bread will set an ambush for you. There is no understanding in him. Listen, guys, the Arab people cannot even get along within themselves today. They fight among themselves. We've got radicals. We've got easygoing. And we see it in our society today. I do not know if you realize this, but those of you who are Google searchers, you get on there and you Google this, we're... Islam has taken over, and it's taken over continents right now. It is becoming the fastest growing religion in America today. It is the fastest growing religion in the, in the uh, population of the inmates across this great land. We've got some parts of Michigan and different towns where it is controlled and completely ran by an Islamic board. That, that is not something I'm making up. You can get on there and search it out for yourself. It is, a, it is a takeover religion. That's the way it was founded on. When Muhammad went back many, many years ago, like 900 or so A.D., he, uh, he, he had this mindset that he had to go out into the woods, up into the mountains, and he had this vision, and he started working all this religion. He started working everything, and guess what happened? He says, you know, the, he, he brought it back and showed it to the people, and the people wouldn't accept it. And so guess what he did? He got an army, and he took over. And they've been taking over cities and towns and communities and nations ever since then. But don't fear. Don't worry. God is on his throne. Verse 8, will I not on the day declares the destroy, destroy uh, uh, the, uh, the declares the day of the Lord, destroy wise men from Edom and understanding from the mountain of Esau? Then your mighty men will be dismayed, O Teman, so that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Esau and, and uh, by slaughter. Do y'all see what's taking place here? Listen, guys, I need, you all need to understand. Don't you listen. This this is not a, a power clean off a spot and have a, a, a fit sermon. I want y'all to learn something. We are living in some very treacherous times in America and around this world. There are people out there that want to destroy us as a nation. They want to destroy Christianity. They want to destroy what we stand for. And you and I got to know, We listen, what did Jesus say? He says, you are wise enough to know whatever... Where the storms come from, you can go out and look at the weather and know that a storm is brewing. Amen? He says, if you know that, then you need to study the signs that I give you in my word so that you will know when the time is near. Only, only Jesus and the Heavenly Father knows when this is all going to take place. But he says, you know, he says like this. He gives the example of a woman being pregnant. He says, when a woman is pregnant... And he says, you watch the belly grow. And I'm paraphrasing this, okay? He says, but when contractions take place, you know something is about to take happen, right? Well, listen, our world is in the state of contractions right now. We are, re we are in the birth pains. It is about to explode like never before. I know what you're saying. We've heard this and heard this and heard this. I'm here to tell you I'm a prophecy guru. There is not one prophecy that needs to be fulfilled. Every one of them is done. Even all the way back to the time of Jesus, the Thessalonians went out and sold everything and sat on their porch because they thought Jesus was coming back in their time. But you know what? There's some things that need to be done. They're done. They're finished. The world's gone out. All the satellites. Everything is set up. I mean, everything. Everything's done. Only thing we need now is Jesus to come back. Wow. And we're, and we're going to see all these birth pains, and it's going to take place. The Middle East. Listen, guys. You know, let's see, you have to understand, why is this? Israel is as small as Rhode Island. It's only a few miles wide and a few miles long. You could probably walk it in a day either direction. It's not very big. It is the center of the earth. It is the center of God's footprint. Why is everybody after that? Well, it's because Satan has planted it in them. God, Satan, God used Satan to get our attention. He's trying to, you go back and study history. He, he's trying to wipe out the Jews, Jesus, the, all the faith, all the Christians, and the reason why, if he can get America to help Israel to divide Jerusalem and get rid of it, guess what? 
then Jesus can't come back. The, the whole plot is for Satan to try to somehow, some way, to change the mind of God and what God has written in. Remember what he said? I'll go out and wipe out all the little baby boys. If I can kill all of them, then Jesus can't be born. But he was born. And then when Jesus grew and did all the things he did, didn't he tempt him 40 days and 40 nights? He said, I got him. That wasn't good enough. I know what I'll do. I'll have the Jewish people and the Romans crucify him. And they did. He said, I got him. It's over. And, and three days later, what took place? Up from the ground he arose. Amen? So you've got to put all of it in perspective and all that's taking place. Satan is trying to change the mind of God and what he's already written. He can't do it, but he's trying. He's, you know, and now his thing is, is to remove Jerusalem from the Jewish people, wipe out Israel, and then it'll be gone forever. But guess what, guys? God's got another plan. You and I are witnessing all of this unfold and take place right before our very eyes. Just listen, listen guys, get in and turn on your TV. I know thousands of people that I talk to over the years that never ever watch the news. Now I don't trust all of it, I know they tell us what we want us to know, but we, they do tell us some things that are taking place, certain battles and because we sent our troops out and stuff like that. They showed the rockets this morning, you know, going into Israel and Israel shooting them back. Listen guys, it's taking place right before our very days, it's been happening. You know, the, the stage is being set. Satan is putting it into the minds of these people that he needs to wipe out Israel lock, stock, and barrel, okay? And this all goes back to Ishmael and Edom in our very, right now in our very life. 2,941 years ago, something like that, this was penned to paper, and we're watching it come forth today. Amen? Isn't that exciting? Wow! That's fascinating. Look here, let's go back to uh, verse 8 again. Let's, go, let's back up. Will I not on that day, declares the Lord, destroy wise men from eating, Edom and understand from the mountain of Esau? Verse 9. Then your mighty men will be dismayed, O Teman, so that everyone may be cut off from the mountain of Esau by slaughter? This is God doing this. Because of the violence of your brother Jacob... Now, y'all remember what happened. Now, see, guys, here, listen, when you talk to a Muslim or a, someone who is really in the faith, here's what they say. They'll take our Bible as God's Word, and they'll say that, you know what, this is God's Word, Jesus was a prophet, and all these things. But they go back to Abraham being the leader of all of religions and people. They'll agree with that. And they'll use our Bible against us because our Bible says the firstborn shall receive the inheritance. But Esau, I mean not Esau, but Ishmael and Hagar may have been the firstborn from Abraham's seed, but it was not the firstborn from him and Sarai for the blessing of God. And so they use that. So they'll stand and argue with you all day long. I know, I do it all the time. They'll say, you know what? Abraham is our leader, and we say the first child was, was you know, Ishmael. And guess what? Ishmael was the leader of it all, and Jerusalem is ours. They, we, it's ours. We're taking it. It's ours. And that's the argument. They won't read the rest of the Scripture, what God says. Oh, yeah, that may have been, but this is what I wanted. It's through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not Abraham, Ishmael, and Esau. Okay? It's, it doesn't go that way. It's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Right here it says in verse 10, because of the violence of your brother Jacob, there was an issue between them because Jacob received his birthright. He sold it, all these issues. You can go back and read all that. There's just all this turmoil that's going on. And so there's this battle between the Arabs and the Jews, and they're fighting on who owns this. And then you throw Satan in the middle of it, and he's got the Arabs thinking, hey, this is yours. If you wipe out Israel, that's what the leader from Iran says, if we can bomb them and get rid of them and get rid of America and do all those things, guess what? We'll be able to have charge and take control. We'll, lead, we'll, we'll own all of the Middle East. I hate to tell them, but the Bible says, the, you know, the Israelites own all of it from Egypt all the way to the, uh, the they own all of Saudi Arabia and all of it. That's all the gods. They've taken it from the Jews. You know, read the Bible. 
They own all of that, Saudi Arabia and everything. It belongs to the Jew. But you know what? They've settled for one little bit stretch of land and Jerusalem is it. If our president or the, any president or our Congress says, you know what? You divide Jerusalem or you give it to the Arabs, you hold on because God will put a hurting on this nation like you have never seen. You think this last hurricane or the one down south or all these tornadoes or all these fires, you think it's bad yet? If you and I don't pray and tell our president and our leaders that we need to get behind Israel and support them, no holds barred. Listen, every Every nation has gone against Israel. Guess what? God said, poof, and you are gone. Just because we think we're Americans, because we think we're bad, and we got the best military and everything else, it is God, and he will do what he wants to do. And you and I, we need to be take this serious. This ain't no game, guys. Y'all better hold on. You think it's going to get more expensive? You know, listen, hold on. But don't fear. You know, so a lot of people, they, they wring their hands. I jump and shout. You know, say, all right, we're getting ready to see something exciting. We're getting ready to witness all this. Is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. And we need to stand on the rooftops of our houses and shout. You know, we need to shout. Be rare. Guess what? Beware. It's coming. All right? Look here at verse 11. On that day you stood aloof. And the day of the strangers carried off his wealth. And the foreigners entered his gate and cast lots for Jerusalem. You too were as one of them. Do not gloat over your brother, all right? The brother's day, the day of the misfortune. And do not rejoice over the sons of Judah in the, in the day of their destruction. Yes, do not boast in the day of their distress. And do not enter the gate of my people in the day of their disaster. What's he talking about there? There's going to be a time where in 722 B.C., the Assyrians are going to uh, take the northern tribes, and then uh, five, uh, 580 or 526, I can't remember, uh, you know, the Babylonians are going to destroy the southern kingdoms. I think it's 526. You've you got to march backwards because this was 841. It said, don't worry about all this taking place. I'm not through yet, all right? Look here, it says, yes, you do not gloat over their calamity, in the day of their disaster and do not loot their wealth in the day of their disaster do not stand at the fork of the road to cut down their fugitives and do not imprison their survivors in the day of their distress okay that right there is all the things that's taking place now you ready for the future you ready for today it starts in verse 15 this is talking about the day it says for the day of the Lord draws near on all the nations do you see that He's talking about today. Today. For the day of the Lord draws near on all the nations. As you have done, it will be done unto you. Is that scary? We've got a country that was founded on the faith and, and beliefs of Jesus Christ, and we got a president to get up and say that we're not a Christian nation. You think God is going to just talk, let that happen? Hmm. 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 Hold on. I got to talk to the Aldridge's and they came back and they said little Michaela wasn't afraid of nothing. There's no ride she wouldn't ride. Well, honey, you ain't never seen the ride that's about to take place. And we better hold on because it's going to be the ride of rides. Okay? It says, for the day of the Lord draws near on all the nations. As you have done, it will be done unto you. Your dealings will return on your own head. Because you have drank on my holy mountain, all the nations will drink continually, and they will drink and swallow and, and become as if they never existed. But on Mount Zion, there will be those who escape. And it will be holy, and the house of Jacob will possess their possessions. Then the house of Jacob will be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. But the house of Esau will be a stubble, and they will, be, they will set them on fire and consume them, so that there will be no survivor in the house of Esau. For the Lord has spoken. Do you see that? Listen to me. Listen to me, guys. Listen to me with your heart. I know this is not the sermon that I style and have a, having a good time. When I said and think about what our men and women have served us in this country, 
This is a day that we honor in our veterans. And if we don't claim this country for what God intended it to be, all of their blood and all of their lives is in vain. It was useless. If we're going to give it over to Satan, why even go to war? I love my freedoms, don't you? I thank all those men and women who've given their lives in the ultimate sacrifice to fight. I thank them for it, the ultimate sacrifice. And then we as a nation, our leaders are saying, hey, let's leave God out of this. Let's take prayer to the one true God out of school. Let's take Merry Christmas and Jesus and all the issues around Christmas. Let's get rid of that. You can't wear a cross. You can't mention Jesus. You know, you can do anything you want with any other religion, but if you bring Jesus into it, you're subject to a fine. Oh, listen. If our country don't get it together, and if we don't get it turned around, we're in trouble. You say, preacher, we're already in trouble. We got things that are going on right now that is just shameful. Medicare and all the issues with our health care and all these things that we deal with every day, it's getting worse. Taxes are going up. Everything you can't even, Every time you go to any store, it costs more than it did yesterday. I got a witness. Our uh, money's not going as far, but they're spending it like it's crazy. $16 trillion in debt. Sound like a politician now, don't I? Listen, that's all written in God's book. God was not surprised. But there's a verse in 2 Chronicles 7.14 is just as applicable for today. If my people, hmm, my people as Christians will call upon my name and repent and turn from their sins. I'm paraphrasing this, okay? And turn and trust on me. What's it say? I will heal their land. Wow, guys. We know our nation's in trouble. And the reason why it's in trouble is because we've turned our back on a holy God. We thought that 9-11 was going to be a wake-up call. It was how long? For about two weeks. The churches were filled. People were praying and crying and everything else. It's done gone forgotten. We done had how many more disasters since that? While I was watching the news this morning, there was an earthquake in a, in a weird kind of place up in Kentucky and Tennessee and Virginia. It said it took out you know, about, about 20, I mean 20, uh, about 10 different states in a, that region felt it. The Bible says be ready for earthquakes. Be ready for the evil that's coming against you. Guys, we're living in some scary days. But don't be scared. Don't be afraid. God's on His throne. Amen? Is He in charge? He says right here in this little book, Obadiah, yeah, Edom and Esau, they thought they had it together. But they don't know me. I'm God. I'm the one who's got it in charge. And my word will stand. There's over a thousand prophecies in the Bible. And every one of them has been fulfilled so far. Has hit it with 100% accuracy. And if he's done those, we can rest assured he's going to complete the rest that needs to be fulfilled. Be concerned. But make sure you got your house in order. Are you a genuine Christian? I'm not talking about going through the, the rituals of church and all that. Have you come to a place where you know that you've sinned against God, you've sinned against yourself, and you've sinned against mankind, and you've had this conviction upon you, and you've had to turn to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I want to repent of this and turn from those ways and turn towards you. That's what salvation is. Do you have a true walk with Jesus? Is He more than just a Savior? Is He the Lord of your life? Are you following Him in baptism? Are you following Him in obedience to the Scriptures? Oh, I know we're going to make mistakes and we're going to do things wrong and we're going to be foolish. That's the human nature of us. And thank you for His mercy and grace. I'm not trying to make excuses, but we all do something foolish. Amen? The Bible says if you commit... I'll give you an example. Anybody here ever told a lie? Mm, yeah, everybody. So everybody's hand ought to go up, right? 
The Bible says, thou shalt not lie. Then James says, if you break one of the commandments, you're guilty of them all. So, a liar is just as guilty as a murderer. Hmm? So, are we all guilty before God? You know it. But when it's all said and done and we wipe out we wipe out all the dust and all the clouds and everything, all the fog that's in the air, can you say with assurance that you know for certain that if the rapture was to take place today, you'd go in the rapture? Do you know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Do you know? One of these days, guys, there's going to be a mess across the Middle East like you've never seen. Israel is already ready to take, take Iran out because of their nuclear power. They are ready. The sad part about it is we as Americans have loaded up some of the other countries with nuclear bombs also. And so when it hits, there's going to be hell to pay. There's a Bible verse that goes something like this. I'm paraphrasing again. There's only one thing you need to be concerned about. And that's who owns your soul. If God owns your soul, can't no bomb, can't no cancer, can't no grave, can't no death, can't no issues take you from his grasp. Are you for sure? Are you for sure? How about your loved ones? Do they know? Make sure they know. Give them a gospel track. Tell them something. Tell them to call me. I'll share it with them. Do something. You know, t tell them. Because guess what? Our redemption is near. There's a place and time. Now let me throw something else at you. The Bible says that Jesus created on in six days. Everybody agree? We can find that in the scriptures. He rested on the seventh. That's in Genesis. Another place in the New Testament it says a day with the Lord is like a thousand years. This earth, as we know, is 6,000 years old from biblical times from Adam and Eve. All historians can prove it. Now they say that something happened between Genesis 1, 1, and 1, 2 and may have made this earth a little bit older. I don't know. We can ask God when we get there. But from Genesis to right now is 6,000 years. I personally do not believe the millennium has gotten here yet. I think we're on our timetable and not God's timetable. But I do know from my studies that it's within the next few years. And if God is someone that you can study and he does the same thing over and over and over, he never changes, six years... And then he rests at the seventh. Six years of earth, 6,000 years, he's going to rest the seventh, and the seventh is the thousand-year reign of Christ called the millennium, found in Revelation at the end of the book. So we are ready. Our earth is ready. The 6,000 years is ready. We're ready to go into our 7,000th year, which will be the millennium. It is ready. The world has never been set at this stage before where we have enemies on everywhere. All of the people from Ishmael have got Israel surrounded. And only God can intervene, and that's found in Ezekiel. Everything that we've done, this little bitty old book called Obadiah, says, hey, hell's going to be turned loose on this earth. But those of you who are of Jacob's Lineage, which is where Jesus comes from, and we accept him as Lord and Savior. He says, we are safe. Do you know, without any hesitation, that you're a Christian? Not just a church member. Not someone who puts money in a plate. Not someone who holds a position. That you are sold out to Jesus Christ. I got this illustration that I use. You can take an old drunk out here in the gutter and he can be just wasted three times drunk, okay? Can't even walk, just laying there. And you can ask him, do you want to go to the devil's hell? No, I don't want to do that. You want to burn in fire forever? No, I don't want to do that. Well, say this prayer. Okay, dear Jesus. 
Well, I appreciate those prayers, but we as uh, Christians in the old school have led a lot of people to say a prayer without any repentance. And without repentance, they and you and I are not saved. There's been a lot of people that's prayed that prayer. They're going to split hell wide open. Oh yeah, I, I prayed that prayer when I was a kid and, and I went to church and, and all those things and got baptized and now you know I'm living for the devil and everything else, but it's okay because I was saved. Well, guess what? They probably wasn't. They just, they just prayed that prayer. We made it called it easy believism. Came back through about the 40s and 50s. They got away from Scripture. The Scripture says, without repentance, there is no salvation. Are you saved? In Ezekiel, it says that I am the watchman on the tower. And those who are in here, and those who listen to this by video on internet, your blood's on you. I've told you. If I don't tell you, then your blood is on me. Are you for sure that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior? Would you bow your heads, please? Every head bowed, a time of thinking. We're going to sing a song. I believe it's I Surrender All. That's what salvation is really about. Surrendering it all to the Lord. In each of our lives, we all make mistakes and we do things. I've told you once, I've told you a hundred times. I'm the chief sinner in this room. I don't pretend to be holier than thou because I haven't got nothing together. The only one who's got it together is the one I serve. But I know with assurance that he is my Lord and Savior. Do you really know him? Are you willing to surrender it all? Oh, Heavenly Father, for these next few moments, we want to give this invitation to you. This is between you and your people and no one else. Father, you let your Holy Spirit move up and down each aisle, rest on each soul that's here today. And if they are not saved, may this be the day of salvation for anyone. And those who listen to us on YouTube, if you're not saved, you email us. We'll talk to you. We'll get you the Bible passages. We want to make sure before, before all hell breaks loose on this earth that you have the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Spirit, move in the, on the hearts of your people today. If anybody needs to use this altar for any reason whatsoever, may this be the day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen.